Okay, so a lot of you may not know that uh, DaVinci Resolve can edit your still images, your raw still images. These particular images were taken from the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. So these are using the stills image button on the Blackmagic camera. And what I'm going to do is take this particular one, and all you have to do is you have to have DaVinci Resolve opened up in the background. I'm currently using the public beta uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio. I do have the uh, full studio version, but it's 16.2. And this is 16.3. It will still work on 16.2 and some of the earlier versions in the same manner as I'm showing here, just for your information. So take your still images. These are DNG files. These are the raw files that are saved after you click that button on the Blackmagic. They will come in like that. You rename them and so forth. And having DaVinci up in the background with the media pool on the edit. So the edit page, have the media pool open, take your still image, your raw image, and drag and drop it into the media pool area. And once on here, because I need to get this into the timeline so I can go to the color page and start editing that, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to create new timeline using selected clips. Now I shot this in 1920 by 1080. So we're going to show you a little trick there, how you can upscale as well. And I'm just going to click create. I could rename it or whatnot. So it comes in as a raw image like that. I'm going to get rid of my other screen there because I don't need that. And we're going to go into the color page. I'm going to just go fit so that we get to see this. I worked this in Photoshop uh, Raw, the um, image editor, and <laughs> DaVinci Resolve does so much better. <laughs> you have to try it yourself to discover that, but it, it definitely works better with its own <laughs> stuff here. Okay, so we go to clip. I had exposed this really well, and so I'm going to just leave this as shot. I'm going to leave it at Blackmagic Design because it's not necessarily for the Rec. 709 uh, that we're looking for on YouTube and so forth. It is the film because that was what it was shot at, the gamma. And it's ISO at 400. I'm going to hit Highlight Recovery. Now, the nice thing about this is because I shoot either in ISO 400 or ISO 3200, that gives me the leeway of going from 100 all the way up to 1000 if I shoot in 400. If I shoot in 3200, it's 1200 to 8000 or whatever it is. So you've got your dual native ISO uh, and it works, uh, it gives you a lot of latitude. So if I shoot in 400, I can drop the ISO down to anything I need. And you'll see over here that the parade drops accordingly. So a quick way of doing uh, this type of editing, because this is a still, I want to see, I'm going to bring this up to about 200. I'm going to see what is the darkest area in the image. It's either going to be here under the arm here, or maybe under the arm here, or this little spot right here back in the tree. Now, each one of these may have a color cast to it. So the easiest way to do this is I'm going to go into the color wheels. I go to the middle button for the primary bars, and you'll see this little pick the black point. And so I'm going to pick a black point. Actually, I think this is darkest. And what that does is it sets all your, basically it sets all your values down to the bar. So as you can see now, Got a nice black already set into here. Okay. And a couple of other ways to do this. Now there's, that's the whitest spot that I can see. So I could just go here, pick the white point and click in that area. And that will set my upper values here. So basically my highlights and my darks are already set and it's looking pretty good so far. Now, what I like doing, here's a little, a little trick, uh, is I like taking my saturation and dropping it all the way down. This helps me determine if I'm ever in question and I want to pull this lift up, 
I want to get these values here even because that means that their their values are proper, they're correct. And if you drop the saturation all the way down, you will see that right off the bat. Now as you bump the colors up by raising the saturation, you will see that they will have their own individual values that are based on what was shot in the scene. And you can see with this simple two click here and here on the proper spots in the scene, it's already a gorgeous picture. Okay, and so this is your still image. I could play with it a bit more, but I really enjoy uh, what I'm seeing right now. Like I said, I may put up, you know, I can always hit saturation. And here's a trick if people, if you get to the saturation, it's at 94, but it's not quite saturated enough in there. Just go over here on your nodes, hit option S on the Mac, and you create another node and you get a new fresh saturation. So you can bump that saturation all the way to the ceiling and beyond if you need. I'm going to delete that one because I don't need it. So I like the subtlety here. I may bump it up a little bit on the highlights. And you'll see over here in my parade that that will come up to the top a bit more on my values. And sometimes you can apply contrast if you want it. Or you can mess with the curves. There's a lot I could do. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because, again, this is a really nice shot. What I'm going to do now to export this as an image, right click on it, grab still. Over here, because this is in the gallery page now, on stills, you have stills and you have power grade. Power grade allows you to take all of the stills that you have and apply them to any project you're working, working on. Stills section here only applies it to the one that you're working on, meaning you can't go into another area. Like say if I pull up this particular one, we're working on the beta, so hopefully it won't crash. There we go. So in here, on its own stills page, it has its own stills that I already applied here. The power grade is where it would carry over from anything else that I have already saved. So if you want to have your stills to where you can apply them back to any of these images, you go to the power grade, do just what I did earlier by saving stills, raw image editing, we'll go back to that one. And I'll do that again so you so I don't lose you. So in here, you can see there's a little bit um, a red. Uh, this is this was a morning shot, so we do have some sunlight. Just as an aside, so if I wanted to get rid of some of this red, there's a couple of different ways that I can do that. And I can go to panel number two over here and slide the temperature down. And you can see that actually makes it pretty nice. And all that does is it starts dropping some of the reds and increases the blues. And that's actually really nice. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to go back over to saturation and bump that just a bit more. We're at 100. We'll leave it at that. So here I'm going to just delete this. So again, if I want this to be applied to any project where I can come back later and get this, I would go here and grab still and it would show up here. If I wanted it to apply just to the um, project I'm working on, I leave it on stills here, grab stills. So what this means is that if I create a second one, so let's just say I take this and I drag this over here and I remove, reset the node grade, leave it like that. What these do, you're not just saving stills over here. What you're doing is you're saving a color profile, essentially. It's everything that you've done to create that color. So you can right click on it, apply grade. And that's it. So now you've applied that same grade. So that's one way of doing it. Another is just to middle mouse button on the one that you want to copy. So that's what that purpose is. So when I say when you want to apply that or have this color scheme applied to any project that you're working on, 
do this grab still in the power grade window. So now we're going to export this and right click on this and you go to export. And you have a variety of export options PNG files, TIFF, JPEG, DXP, Cineon files. Uh, we're going to just go to PNG. I'm going to just do this too. We'll just go one. Okay. We're going to export that as a PNG and one. So now that's a 1080. So now over here, one is an image PNG file, 6.2 megabytes. It's a 1080, 1920 by 1080. Gorgeous image. Again, Da Vinci does such a good job with color. I mean, you just and quickly as you saw. Now, here's your trick for scaling it with very little artifacting. So taking this same still image, dragging and dropping it in here and so forth, I'm just going to right click on it, create new time using select clips. And this time I'm going to do 4K. I'm just going to call it 4K. I'm going to go to use custom settings, format, go down here to whatever size you want. I'm going to go to the 4090 DCI. Boom. Okay. I'll we'll leave everything else as it is. Create. And it automatically creates the 4K timeline. Only because I called it 4K. And it's already rescaled everything accordingly. You can see the black bars here on the sides. I can go into my inspector panel. Click on this first. Go into my inspector. And I can expand this a little bit to get rid of the bars. I just zoom in so that upreses it even more. And so depending on how I needed to have this positioned, I can take this and hit transform. I can move it by myself if I want, or I can move it numerically. And I'm going to just bring it down a little bit because I did expand it there. And if you zoom out, you can see how much room you've got left to play with this. Okay. And then I just click this again, and that kind of locks it in. Now, we go to the color panel. And because I've already saved this on the same stills in the same project, I'm going to right click on it and put apply grade. And bam, there we go, a 4K image upscaled and you can see the quality is <laughs> it's really sweet um, da vinci does a great job of upscaling not only video but as you can see the actual image too and you can apply a lot of different effects to it that's the nice thing about this tons of different effects now to work this at the 4k i'm going to right click grab still and take the one that i had here so that's the new one. If you get confused, just go through here, delete selected, delete selected, right click, grab still, 4K. You click underneath it and you can rename that so it's less confusing. Now that's the 4K still taken off of this one. Right click, export. We're going to name this 2. <laughs> Okay, and 4K. PNG file. Again, you can do TIFF, you can do whatever one else you need down here. I'm just going to do nice and quick. Export that. Pop over here. And we're going to look at 2, which is now a 26 megabyte file, as you can see. Oof. And it's still, the image quality is still beautiful it's 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 pretty gorgeous it was a great day i'm telling you it was it was overcast just enough and i had the exposure set uh well um uh, it's nice when those things come together so i went from a 6.2 megabyte 1920 image to a 4k which is a 4000 and get a 26 megabyte file so, if you have any questions on that, let me know. I know I'm going through this kind of quickly, but I want to help you however I can. And if you have questions on that, please put them in the comments.
If you do like this, please hit the thumbs up so Google knows that uh, you're enjoying the work and passes me around in its system so that uh, we can grow this channel and I can do more of these type videos. All right. And subscribe if you haven't. Thank you very much.